Cordoba has just fallen to the Castilians. A turning point in the history of Al-Andalus. Yet, it also marks the beginning of the story for a great Western thinker, Al-Qurtubi. Muhammad bin Ahmed Al-Qurtubi was known for his writings, especially for a commentary on the Qur'an. What is it about his commentary that has made it of such interest up to our own time? I'm a researcher and I'm studying the life and writings of Muhammad Al-Qurtubi. One of the things that I want to look at is what was the political situation? What was the cultural and social conditions? And I think that knowing uh, more, researching, looking into that context will yield, I think, important clues, um, if not answers. His name is Muhammad bin Ahmed al-Khazraji al-Qurtubi. He was born in the 1200s in a small town just outside of Cordoba in Montoro. The period that he lived in, many major events had been occurring, uh, apocalyptic even. He witnessed the fall of his city, Cordoba, which was a major political and cultural revolution from the Muslim dynasty to the Castilian kingdom. Just prior to that, he lost his father. But then he travels to Egypt and he witnesses a second major uh, political revolution, which is the fall of the Ayyubid dynasty, founded by Salahuddin Saladin, and it falls to the Mamluk regime, one of the most dynamic dynasties in Islamic history. If that wasn't enough, in 1258, there's the fall of the Abbasid Caliphate in Baghdad, which has tremendous and symbolic consequences for the Muslim community. One of the things I find most interesting about al qurtubi is why his writings have had such a profound impact, why they continue to be read and studied and engaged with, published and translated to this day. al qurtubi was someone who was uh, deeply connected to the land. In youth, he was a, he was a farmer uh, with his father, but he was also a student of knowledge. He wasn't born into a wealthy family, and he wasn't born into a scholarly family. Uh, he was someone who had to work while studying. And he managed to make time to memorize the Quran at an early age, and he studied uh, pre-Islamic poetry. I appreciate the fact that al qurtubi had to work and study at the same time. So you have to know when to plant. You have to know how much water to give. If you give too much water or too little water, it's a problem. You have to be aware of things like disease. It's a knowledge and science in and of itself. And this knowledge of agriculture, in addition to working, putting your hands in the land, is something that distinguishes al qurtubi from other scholars. The city of Cordoba is not only the political capital of Al-Andalus, it's the cultural, economic, intellectual capital of the Islamic West. And then in the 1200s, it goes into a steady decline. Cities begin to be taken over by Christian kings. So in the Islamic West, the cities begin to fall like dominoes. Uh, not only Cordoba, but Sevilla, Malaga, and lastly, Granada. Cordoba at this time, was under the, the rulership of the Almohads. They were unable to defend their lands and there was constant raids. One day when al qurtubis father was in the fields working, it was the third day of Ramadan. We know the story because al qurtubi tells the story himself in his book. It was a raid. al qurtubis father was killed in this raid and many other inhabitants of Cordoba were also killed that day and many were taken captive. It was a unfortunate time uh, for Qurtubi, and this event caused him to reflect deeply about the meaning of life and the importance of remembering the life to come.
After the fall of Cordoba, Al-Qurtubi has to leave his city and find himself essentially homeless in the countryside. Al-Qurtubi tells us that he was being pursued one day in Al-Andalus, uh, in a province just outside of Cordoba, right here, the city of Almodovar. And he's being chased by two horsemen. And he says that I didn't stick around to wait to find out what these men wanted. I immediately started running. My only cover, he says, that was to jump into a hole in the ground to hide, but I was still exposed. And so he said, the only thing that I could do was to recite these few words at the beginning of Yasin, and these two men that were chasing him passed right over him. And then they made a second pass. And at that moment, he realized that he had been veiled by these two people. One of them yelled, Es un diablo. This is a devil. Al-Qurtubit said, I realized that I had been cloaked. You know, all I could say at that moment was to thank God. It was a near-death experience, and the Muslim community almost lost one of the great figures in history. It's such a miraculous event. It's like a scene out of a science fiction movie. But more importantly, it shows that Al-Qurtubi remembered God in every situation. So we're on our way now to meet Muhammad Escudero. He's the founder of Instituto Halal or Halal Institute in Cordoba. He's from a prominent Cordoban Muslim family. I would like to talk about the Islamic history of Cordoba and the Muslim community today. Muslims were established here, there were mosques all around the city. Mm -hmm. Arabic language was the, the main language, uh, uh, and all the production, literature, uh, medicine, all these uh, science were developed. But unfortunately, uh, with this fighting for the power between Muslims and Christians, mm -hmm. many uh, Muslims start to move to other places in Al-Andalus, where the Muslims still had the power, particularly in Granada and in Malaga. You know, the, the political regime failed uh, the people, and so they were turning to other sources of leadership, other sources uh, for aid, and Sufism was one of that, and the Qurtubi did, did that as well. Yeah, he was always trying to help the poor people, help them to follow no, the rules of the Quran. Speaking with Muhammad Escudero, I learned that the Cordoban Muslims of today see their role as one of dialogue for understanding. For Al-Qurtubi, his path was devotion to the Qur'an, reflecting on it, writing, and teaching it. What he must have felt like, losing your father, losing your city. He himself was almost killed. Looking around at the political situation, his home country is, is slowly crumbling before his eyes. He's now a refugee in his homeland, wandering, probably confused. One can only imagine all of the emotions that he's experiencing. Loss, deep sadness, perhaps even uh, depression, anger, uh, resentment. At who? At the political regime that had failed to protect the people of Al-Andalus. Wandering. We don't know exactly where and for how long, perhaps reflecting thinking about the experiences that he went through. They must have had a profound impact uh, on his life, his outlook, and the writings that he was going to compose in the future. al Qurtubi decides to leave Al-Andalus for good, and he makes his way to Egypt. al Qurtubi arrives here in Alexandria. It was a port city, and for merchants, scholars, pilgrims coming from the west, 
a major gateway to the Islamic East. Um, it was a bustling city in his time. Um, it was also a fortress city established to protect uh, the lands of Islam from, for example, the Crusaders. And when Al-Qurtubi arrived, one could imagine what he was experiencing, what he was feeling, just having left his homeland for good forever and never to go back. But you can imagine him looking back over his shoulder to the land that he had just left. But also he has to look forward as well. Alexandria was a home away from home for Al-Qurtubi because there had already been, for some time, established communities of Andalusis there. And he was able to live among fellow Andalusis and continue his studies with masters. After about two years, Al-Qurtubi leaves the bustling city for a small quiet town along the Nile called Minya, which is where he wrote his famous commentary. Minya is a port town along the Nile, and the place where Al-Qurtubi lived, taught, and wrote until his death in 1273. As I make my way to the tomb of Al-Qurtubi, I reflect on his journey and that of my own. I'm interested in what scholars today have to say about Al-Qurtubi. Dr. Daoud is a professor of classical Arabic literature and is someone who is familiar with the fame and content of Al-Qurtubi's commentary. It was an enriching discussion with Dr. Daoud, who was eager to show me around Minya and to talk more about this town's connection to Al-Andalus. In the world, there were also major events happening, and there were people like Al-Qurtubi that were responding to those challenges, to those problems, to those questions. You have, for example, St. Thomas Aquinas, you have uh, Shi Li, who is writing also commentaries on his sacred Confucian texts. You also have Madhya Archia, a Hindu philosopher and theologian, who's also commenting on his sacred Hindu texts. You also have Maimonides, from, also from Cordoba, who's writing a commentary on his sacred text. All of these texts are responding to questions that are unique to the time that they're living in. I call this period the age of sacred commentaries from about 1150 to 1300 that these major figures were writing texts that are still read today and published people are still concerned with these questions given the times unique times that we are living in and these texts offer guidance and solutions and direction for those who read them Uh, Kortubi is calling people to think, to reflect uh, their own mortality. But not only that, but also what they can do in the here and now. And he's calling people to do good here and now. So as there is this sense of uh, commitment to community. And that's really ultimately what it's all about, is serving your community and he's doing it through his writings. <laughs> 